Hello and welcome to this uh, Cubase tutorial. Today I just wanted to show you how you can beat map or tempo map uh, performance either to add other instruments to a grid or if you just want to clean it up and make it more precise and more fluent like I'm gonna do now. Um, so I have this piano performance that I did which is sort of like working as a skeleton for, for a project I'm working on. <laughs> So as you can hear, it's not it's not too bad, but it's between chords especially. Yeah, there's a few mistakes and it's a little bit like... Yeah, you can feel that this pianist didn't really have a good flow to it. So I'm gonna clean this up and I'm gonna show you a very easy way to do this in Cubase. Uh, so first I'm just gonna cut out this chord, because that's the wrong chord. Let's see... So first I like to just, if I have some long pauses, especially between chords, like finding the space for the fingers and so stuff like that, um, I just want to shorten those pauses a bit. It doesn't really matter too much, but uh, this is just something I like to do. It's also useful because I'm working with a video. I, can show you, I can't show you the video, but I, I usually do this just to see that my timings and everything is still working with the film, um, really. Okay, um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a new version of this, select everything, and then just make it one mini block which is going to be helpful, and then we are going to bitmap this. Um, so what you can do is you can... I think I made this shortcut, but it's basically this tool, which is called Time Warp. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this bar free to the start of my first note. And sometimes I also turn on uh, linear mode for all the tracks. So if I'm doing tempo changes, I won't affect any other tracks like markers and stuff like that. I already did for this first one. Um, you can change this in the project logical editor and to see what I'm doing, I'm triggering this with a shortcut, but um, yeah, this is basically what it's, what it's doing. So it's taking all the tracks. If there's a track, all the tracks in my projects, it will change the time domain to linear. So that's basically what it's doing. And I have a similar one for musical, so I can easily toggle between musical and linear mode. And okay, so I'll go put the first at the first bar I wanted to start. I want this to start at bar three. And then I usually set my quantize settings to one four so I can have every beat. And this tool is very handy because then it snaps into the beats. And so, and then I'll listen to my performance. And I'll, you could do this automatically as well. I just, I don't trust the automatic settings. So I like to do this manually. You could also do it rougher. So you could set your quantization settings to one bar. Then you just, for every bar, you go like this. You can sort of see on the base where every bar starts. Um, you can also see the tempo in these yellow markers. You can see what tempo you're in uh, from this and uh, outwards. You can s also see it's th this value is decreasing as I drag things out. If you just look at this value, you can see now it's decreasing. Okay, so let's just go through this. Okay, that's it. And then, yeah, I'll also, I like to check all the beats. I'll adjust it to uh, one fourth again. And I'll just click all the beats as well, just to make sure to put a marker on there. Yeah, that's good. And then, there we go. Yeah. 
I'm clicking the beats just in case I need to change something because it will change relative between this is like a marker and this is a beat marker and if I change this middle one it will change between those markers but if I each beat is selected at at the piano I know okay there you go okay <laughs> I think we did it uh, let's save this and uh, let's go to my normal tool um, and open the tempo so here you can see this is very telling actually so this is more telling of my my performance than anything else uh, and I also like to just because this is on the last chord so I'm just gonna adjust this down so we can end in the same tempo feels better and then I have the same tempo if I want to keep something rhythmical going over this um, so what I'm doing here I'm doing this with the intention of adding other instruments so I don't want this super rubato sort of insecure playing style um, so once I've tempo mapped it like this I'll turn everything back to musical mode and then I'll usually I'll quantize it and I'll turn on this um, this one iterative quantize on off i'll turn it on that means it won't be super strict with the quantization it will try to keep some before or after the beat um, just to make sure i don't do overdo it and i'll turn it to one eighth because i uh, as i mentioned is in eighth notes all of this and then i'll actually apply a few clicks of quantize because when you have the iterative you can click more if you want it to be stricter and stricter if you click once it will go a little bit in and then if you want it completely on the beat you need to click many more times to line it up uh, so I think this should be good okay and then the reason for um, turning on musical mode is that now we're gonna go back to our tempo map and we're actually gonna smooth out this performance uh, so we already did these changes when we use the time warp tool and what I'm usually just doing is I'm, I'm taking the highest pikes and I'm trying to center everything around one tempo and because our track is in musical mode it will listen to the tempo map so it won't stretch out or anything but if you don't have it in uh, tempo mode no in um, in musical mode it won't listen to the tempo changes so now we're just doing this you can see i'm not making it completely smooth because i want to keep some human feel that's why this also it's not super important not to quantize everything because you will still get some sort of human feel to it even if you quantize very strictly okay let's listen so this is also a way to shape your performance if you want to actually i want to have a little bit slower before the first beat of the melody so i can have a more expressive feel and you can you can make changes like this yeah, it sounds better to me. pretty happy with that um, so I'm using this a lot to shape out the performance like this uh, so I'll play something on the piano and then I'll do this job and then I will start orchestrating and putting in other instruments because now everything is on a uh, grid as we can see here yes um, so I hope this has been helpful this is something I use all the time so I, I hope it has been helpful 
Uh, if you have any suggestions, any questions, leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.